Mobile phone cellular connectivity is a two-way process. The phone mast or cell tower has to communicate with the mobile phone and the mobile phone has to communicate with the cell tower. Now the cell tower is obviously mains powered although it obviously does have sort of power limits based on legalities and all sorts of other reasons. However the phone far away from anything legal has a massive limitation to how much radio power it can emit in that it has to run for hours and hours on a tiny little lithium ion battery. So this means that your cell tower really far away has to be incredibly good at listening out to what the phone is saying, especially considering that the distances between say the mobile and the tower can be 20 kilometers or more potentially. Imagine trying to whisper to someone who's 20 kilometers away. Clearly the person at their end needs to be very, very good at hearing. So in order to sort of account for this, mobile phone masts have to be very good at being able to hear and sort of amplify what they hear. So the top of the tower, what you find is something called a masted amplifier or an MHA. Now these are also called other things like TMA, so tower mount amplifier, and also LNA or low noise amplifier. Now that's obviously quite important because like I said, the signals sort of hitting the cell tower from the phone are very, very weak. So it's important that the amplifier not only makes the sort of signal stronger, but also doesn't introduce lots of noise and therefore make the noise floor and signal to noise ratio even worse because the whole point of the amplifier is to make more of the good signal and, effect and comparatively less of the noise. So in this video, I'm going to cover which MHAs, mastered amplifiers, you are often likely to see. And there are obviously quite a few vendors that ma manufacture these devices. So I'm just going to start from basically and rank them in terms of the ones I see most often down to the ones that I kind of see least often. Now also the ways in which different operators use master amplifiers vary. So E3 tend to have a master amplifier sort of for each input onto the panel. So they'll have a master amplifier for 800 megahertz. They'll have a master amplifier for 1800 and also 2100 and 2600 if it's fitted. Now in terms of Bode Phone Note 2, they tend to do things perhaps a little bit differently. So generally I only find masted amplifiers on their masts on the 2100 megahertz band. So not the 800, 900 or 1800. So anyway, time to start off with the most common masted amplifier. So this by far is Comscope, who are a massive manufacturer of a whole variety of communications equipment. So Comscope make four mastered amplifiers that I regularly see. So in this picture you can see three of them and there's the 800 megahertz one, which is the biggest because it's the lowest frequency, it's the longest wavelength. And then on the sides there is an 1800 and a 2100 one. Now I see these Comscope mastered amplifiers at absolutely tons of masts, especially modern ones that have been upgraded to 4G. So in this case, this picture is from a mobile infrastructure MIP uh, project and obviously new panels, new master amplifiers, new kit, everything. So seeing Comscope mastered amplifiers there is no surprise at all. Now in terms of model numbers, the 800MHz one appears to be an, an E15RO2P11. The 1800 meanwhile appears to be in an E15SO9P series and the 2100 appears to be an E15SO8P series master amplifier. They also have the E15SO2P which are the 2600MHz master amplifiers. So these are really quite small. They appear to have sort of two, um, two small units that are kind of bolted onto each other, kind of like a sandwich. Um, presumably that's just to sort of reduce the size for mounting. Now these aren't seen all that much even on 2600 masts because a lot of 2600 is fed from remote radio units rather than through um, the equipment in the bunker at the base. Now these are very recognisable because they're kind of quite big, white, sort of flat, quite sort of well designed and pretty good looking uh, tower devices 
and of course the other way to tell what frequency they're using is especially in the case of the EM3 mask to look at the cable tags so from these examples it's pretty clear so the 800 megahertz is on green as usual 1800 on red 2100 on blue and 2600 on the sort of yellowy orange color so all these mastered amplifiers it's very easy to work out the frequency and actually through using through actually looking at the mastered amplifiers on mars can actually be a very good way of identifying what the mars is broadcasting if you can't see the sort of tags or the panels that clearly because if say a mars has got two small white mastered amplifiers and then one much bigger one then the much bigger one is most likely for the 800 and the two smaller ones for the 1800 and 2100 so for recognising EN3 masks, looking at the master amplifiers is actually a very good way of doing it, I've found. Now on some EN3 masks, they don't use entirely Comscope equipment. So I have seen a radio design master amplifier used on a few masks. And this one takes these sort of combined 1800 and 2100 and then sort of amplifies them both for feeding to the panels. And this is used again because on quite a lot of masts, E and 3 combine 1800 and 2100 into, through the same feeders for inserting into one band's inputs on the panels. And while Com Comscope do make uh, 1800 and 2100 masted amplifiers, although I haven't yet seen them in use, although presumably at some point they may well be. Now in terms of slightly older EN3 masts, power wave masted amplifiers were incredibly common. Now these seem to do 1800 or 2100 megahertz reception. As you can see from the left picture there are nice red tags on it indicating it's 1800, although I have seen them these used on even older sort of legacy orange masts for which they didn't use the usual tagging system but once again two masters amplifiers per panel with 1800 and 2100 being orange spectrum indicates that one master amplifier will be for 1800 and one will be for 2100 so that's all pretty clear now just a little thing to know i got to see some master amplifiers very much up close when a master was being decommissioned near me and these things might look like little tiny packages on the top of the tower but believe me they are actually really quite big and heavy when on the ground Although, I mean, that's completely understandable because all whenever you're really high up or looking at something far away, it clearly looks smaller. So now, Nokia mast amplifiers. Now, these seem to be used by both e 3 and also Vodafone No 2. So, the two cases that I've seen using Nokia mast amplifiers, one of them was an e 3 3G only 2100 mast. So the master amplifiers were just doing the 2100. And on the other mast, the Nokia master amplifier was being used for O2's 2100 megahertz 3G, which is indicated by the blue tags indicating O2, and they've got U21 written on them for the 2100 megahertz. Vodafone also had panels on this site are running much the same configuration and they had Ericsson master amplifiers for the 3G 2100 megahertz as you can see in this picture. So then what do Vodafone Note 2 use for their 2100 megahertz at quite a lot of sites? So I see quite a lot of Ericsson master amplifiers used for 2100 megahertz at Vodafone Note 2 especially modern CTIL sites. Once again, recognisable because of the sort of letters written on the tags which indicate the frequency that's in use. Admittedly not as clear as en 3s colour tag system, but nonetheless if you've got a long lens it is perfectly capable. And then finally there's one little mastered amplifier that I've only seen maybe one or two of and not all that close up. And all I can really read from the picture is dual band TMA. So this is clearly a master amplifier for 1800 and 2100 used on an e 3 site. Just a thing to note about master amplifiers in old panels is they are sometimes sort of hidden. So if we think back to O2 and Vodafone's 2100 MHz panels, Vodafone's ones had a sort of 
slit slash crossing sort of a third of the way up on the 2100 megahertz panels and that lower third resides a mastered amplifier and with O2 there's the sort of bulge at the bottom and inside that is a 2100 megahertz mastered amplifier as well. Mastered amplifiers also have another key job apart from amplifying signals in that they provide the remote electrical tilt signals to the RET motors or the entire electrical tilt equipment on Mars that use this feature, saving the need to have a separate bias T on the feeder to provide the remote tilt information. So basically the conclusion of this video is that Comscope Mars amplifiers are incredibly common because they're used on EN3 sites which use a lot of Mars amplifiers full stop and in terms of Cornerstone so Vodafone 02 setups, you're looking much more at sort of Ericsson and Nokia as opposed to Comscope. While at the same time there are manufacturers like Radio Design, which and like yeah, like Radio Design, which do kind of creep into the mix and take part as well as PowerWave, which you'll see on some much older sites. But of course, saying that is not saying that the PowerWave Master Amplifiers, just because they're old, are not very good, because clearly they are, otherwise they would have been replacing these masks that have been 4G'd with them on. And furthermore, PowerWave do still make Master Amplifiers, they don't, haven't gone out of business, so there are newer models available. So, um, thanks for watching this little, but perhaps rather long video about Master Amplifiers, and I'll see you on the next video. Happy Master Hunting!